Committee, so I'll call tonight's EDA meeting to order. And Karen, can we have a roll call, please? Commissioner Roberts? Here. Commissioner Hasnick? Here. Commissioner Lorge? Here. Commissioner Erickson? Here. And President Bain? Here. I'd like to invite everyone to rise and join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> Members of the EDA, we have an agenda before you this evening. I will entertain a motion to approve. I move we approve the agenda. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, signal by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And our agenda is approved. First item this evening is to approve the minutes of our regular meeting from June 13th, 2022. I will entertain a motion or any changes that anyone would propose. A motion that we approve the minutes for the regular meeting, June 13th. A second. We have a motion and a second. All those favor in favor signal by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And minutes are approved. And next we have a minutes from the June 27th EDA Downtown Committee Workshop. And entertain a motion or any changes. I move we approve. Second. A motion and a second. All those in favor signal by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And minutes are approved. <coughs> and next on our agenda this evening is consideration of the recommendation to approve the downtown plan. And Dan, I think you're walking us through this. I am. Uh, President, members of the EDA, um, enclosed in the packet was the uh, draft final version of the downtown plan for the city of Forest Lake. Um, this version of the plan does include uh, a couple of small changes that were discussed uh, during the June 27th uh, downtown committee workshop. Uh, a couple of those changes are, um, there was reference during the, the workshop that the picture on page eight was an outdated picture. Um, Bruce did go ahead and switch that up with a, a more current base map. Um, we also added some clarifying language on the boat trailer parking as possible, um, it's a possibility as part of the boat ramp relocation um, analysis. So in the event that we can't relocate the boat ramp, we'll be looking at possibly relocating the parking. The language was there, we just added some clarification language on that to kind of strengthen that a little bit. And then also added some language about uh, the addition of a teen or skate park to the Hardwood Creek Trailhead project. If you recall during the open house that we had, there was quite a bit of discussion at the end of that regarding a, a teen park or some type of activity center for teens. Um, and that also came up um, at Arts in the Park when uh, they were looking at options for uh, park planning an option for teens was uh, discussed there. So we put some language in there, just again, memorializing that in the downtown plan um, as part of that trail, Hardwood Creek uh, Trailhead project. There is one additional change that's not noted on here that's not in the plan yet. Um, on the acknowledgements page, I was going through this, and I noticed that there's no acknowledgement for the Washington County CDA board for helping providing funding for this. Um, I did reach out to HKGI, and we will get that added in for the final, final version once it's approved. Um, but wanted to make sure that we acknowledge that we did receive funding from Washington County CDA to help make this plan possible as part of that. Um, what staff is requesting tonight is looking for a motion to recommend to the Forest Lake City Council that they approve uh, the downtown plan. Um, it should be noted that this motion does not approve the funding sources or the funding of the plan, just the plan itself. So we're basically looking at uh, approving the plan. We will come back with the you know, funding recommendations at a later date. So we're not making a recommendation to approve the funding right now, it's just the plan um, itself uh, this evening. Um, the plan for uh, approval of the downtown plan will, um, after tonight's meeting, we'll bring this to the Planning Commission as well as the Parks, Lakes, and Trails Commission at their July meetings uh, for similar motions to recommend uh, approval. And then we'll bring that back to the Forest Lake City Council on July 25th uh, for their consideration and hopefully adoption of the plan uh, on July 25th. Uh, so with that, staff is requesting a motion recommending that the Forest Lake City Council adopt the downtown plan. And with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions about this latest version or the process in general. Thank you, Dan. Members of the EDA, any questions that we might have, clarifications, points of consideration that we still would like to see included as part of the plan? And then ultimately, um, staff is re recommending a vote of recommendation to council to approve the plan and I think that's coming up in two weeks at the next city council meeting is that right that's correct yes 
I have um, just maybe start discussion on any open discussion items. Um, Dan, and th there's been um, so just a fair amount of kind of community feedback around um, and kind of I, I guess as to be expected on so there's some projects that are anticipated as part of the plan that have some pretty big price tags and potentially um, some question around sources of revenue and the timing of those. Um, what what does the process look like as assuming that the plan gets approved? Just can you give some color and clarification on what that process might look like as individual projects might come um, up for consideration? And um, I'm just looking for kind of the process that would give some assurance to those that are concerned that this is just carte blanche approval of, uh, of project spend of X number of dollars. So in abs I'm looking for something to push back against that. Yeah, well, I think the public is pretty be? aware. I think the public's pretty aware of the price tag of this plan at 35 million, and that inflation probably goes to 40 million. Right. Obviously, uh, in the past, this community hasn't had that kind of capital to to invest. So, um, before we even get to those larger projects, there may be some smaller projects we can figure out how to s fund. But the larger projects will have to be a discussion with the EDA, with the council, on what the appetite is for um, funding these projects. And being that you have a very limited scope of how you can fund, you're basically looking at probably three to four different avenues that the council and EDA has to discuss. Obviously, we can talk a TIF district, um, but that has to pencil out to make sure that works right. It may or may not, depending on what that looks like. You can look at, obviously, issuing bonds for um, those projects and trying to slot them in a certain way that you, you know, I, I would never recommend that you're going to do $35 million worth of bonds at the very beginning because you're not going to have that kind of momentum and plan scope. So you do, you do it every four years, every five years at, at $12 million or $6 million or whatever that might be. Um, uh, we've mentioned before the local sales tax, which is a, a possibility. Um, you have the ability to, and that's not definitely not a given nor a re recommendation, nor is it locked in stone because you have to, as you know, ask the legislature for permission to have a local sales tax, and then it has to go to a referendum. So uh, there's a lot of steps with that. That's a two-year process, at least, before you get to approval of that. But as we, was it about a year ago or so, a little, maybe a little less, that we talked about a sales tax and what that might look like and why we would recommend it, if that's what we'd recommend, um, because we have more people shopping from out of town coming into Forest Lake than we, than m most other communities. So 40% of whatever you collect would basically be from out of town residents to, to fund a redevelopment of downtown. And very preliminary figures based on some of the studies we did uh, through, through the university is a quarter, I believe it's a half percent sales tax would give you about a million two to a million four a year. Uh, so those are those are pretty much the only tools you have in your tool belt. Um, that's going to take a lot of discussion and a lot of planning before we ever, ever get there. Um, again, if it's a bonding situation, we have a lot of other um, uh, projects that will compete for that. Uh, and as you all know, if you bond, it goes into a debt service, which then goes on to the property tax levy. So. I think we have to come back to the EDA, then eventually the council, and try to figure out how we're going to slot that. And that's what the the charge of the EDA is going to probably be for the next half year to a year to try to figure out how this is all going to go. Um, it's not going to be an easy task, nor is it going to be a quick task. So right. we just have to go through that. And I, and I think just to build off of that, you know, and I think. The EDA should be aware that once the plan is approved, it's not done. I mean, that's almost like the easy part of the, the whole process. Then the hard work has to come in. And that is, you know, as we get a little bit further on the agenda with the six month with the work planning, you know, the downtown plan will stay on there. I mean, the approval part was going to be done, but a lot of that work will happen here in terms of prioritization, looking at budget numbers, bringing back recommendations. But at this point, the main thing was, are these projects still with what's going to be included in the plan so we can start looking at those total dollar bills? Because if you start 
shuffling those numbers around or adding or taking project staff, it does change the math. So looking at what's the field and then from there come back and start doing, you know, rolling up the sleeves and sharpening the pencils and figuring out what is the best funding sources for these projects. Also for clarity, um, of the price, t the uh, kind of there's high level estimates at this point of total project price tags. Um, do those projects include, uh, is a, a potential source of funding for those projects in private investment or, and those are partly, partly covered with partnership dollars or are partnership dollars included on top of? And so I use the classic example of maybe, we've talked about an, a redevelopment opportunity that might be, might include some city parking. And obviously that redevelopment opportunity is going to include some private funding. The I just uh, the numbers that are included in the plan would those include are those only the city's share expected to be only the city's share or is that included to be in all in of which there might be what what's included sources? in the plan and Dan you can take over but what's included in the plan is really only the expenditure side of it it's not in, in including any revenue with a public private partnership or a total private part private uh, redevelopment so um, if we again we haven't really looked at the revenue or figured out where we're going to go but that would have to be uh, included in, in some of those tasks and that doesn't include you know if we need to have land acquisition or what the expense of some of these bigger projects might be if there's a expansion of the scope of what that might be a, a, or an opportunity and one of the things that uh, Bruce talked about is an opportunistic taking maybe that comes down the road and then we have to switch course or get creative and figure out how we're going to make that opportunistic um, happen so so no the we don't have any public I'm sorry private dollars yet into to the plan that's um, that's again part two of the plan which Dan says is the more difficult side is how we're going to fund this and, and I think that that breakdown point is as well um, Bruce is working on a sources and uses document to accompany this. It kind of, I'd say, provides some guidance in terms of where can you be partnering leverage dollars. You know, I mean, it's not going to be like the total roadmap to get there, but it's going to provide his expertise in terms of how some of these partnerships have worked in the past. We don't have that document yet. Um, it also should be noted too, like a lot of times when you do a downtown plan, the CIP portion or talking about the funding side is typically not included. Um, one of the reasons why HKGI was selected was they were gonna give us that capital improvement, the, the planning, the dollar side of it. So we knew when it was approved, we had an idea of what we we're getting into. You know, not saying that we're committed to it, but at least we sort of have an idea that if you wanted to do all this, this is the dollar cost. I mean, other planning firms will give you the, the pictures, but they won't tell you how much it costs. I think that's the, the benefit of HK, HKGI is because we do have those, those costs associated with the projects, even though they are estimates at this point. And that's maybe my... Um I'm glad we have a plan that has some high level costs, but I think by including high level costs, it sends a message that those projects are further down the pipe than they might be. And maybe that's just something that we need to just continue to repeat is that these are estimated costs on estimated individual projects should we choose to in the future go down as a city those estimated projects or individual projects. Other points of question or Clarifications or Jenny, go ahead. Oh, go ahead, Sam. Oh, I, I was just going to say that you know the whole thing is uh, a work in progress, and this is not cut in stone. I, I, I want I want the public to know that. I mean, we can certainly adjust things, but also you have to have some kind of a plan, some kind of a blueprint, because if somebody's going to do any kind of development down there, they're going to have to have some sense of direction of where this thing is going, and and that's where they become a partner in this whole thing. And so, um, if we can make it happen, great, but. You got to start out with a blueprint someplace along the line, and and uh, we can certainly modify it as we go. So, I just wanted to thank the citizens of Forest Lake that did participate in the planning yeah. process and uh, letting <coughs> their voices be heard and their neighbors be heard. We everything's been taken to, into consideration, and uh, a lot of man hours have been put into this plan. I just yeah, want to yeah. thank the public. Yeah, very well said. Thank mm -hmm. you. Other questions, comments, thoughts? Uh, yeah, and I don't know who went this Friday. It would be more of a question for Ryan. But uh, so a lot of this, and in in I think a, a part, a easy part to start would be on the streetscape thing, mm -hmm. uh, cost-wise and just just timing. If if it goes nowhere with and um, with the county on the turnback, 
is there, do you see any path forward of doing anything close to what we want to do here if it remains MnDOT right, right away? Well, I think if it remains MnDOT, we're going to have a lot of discussions with MnDOT and what we want to do, and if they will accept narrowing the roads to, to have more parking or more um, sidewalk space. So, again, I think we all understand what that involves. So I think there's a chance. It's just, again, that's why we have a plan, and I think that's the good part is that we go to MnDOT and we say, look, here's what the vision looks like. We have some kind of renderings. What's it going to take to us to get there? So at least they have an idea of what we're talking about instead of walking in the room and says, well, we kind of want to do this, we kind of want to do that. At least there's a plan. So uh, if, it, if there's no turn back, then it's obviously a, probably a, more of a protracted discussion with MnDOT. I mean, I'm, I'll never say never, but it's worth, uh, I think there's a, right. there's a and, possibility and we can get there. Can remind us of the time frame with the county and where we're at again. I know we've talked about it a number of times. Just re remind me. The county has just issued a study for the turn back of 61. Um, I don't think they've, I'm not sure if they've got a consultant on board yet. I think the RFP actually went out on the street is what where they're at. Um, or they've got the consultant hired, one of the two. So it's in a very, very preliminary stage and I don't know what the time frame of that is. Um, so we'll, we'll try to get some more information, maybe update you there, but it's really preliminary and it's really early in that process. And I would add to that that whether it's MnDOT at the table or Washington County at the table, individual projects are going to have similar questions related to streetscape and related to access to 61. And so us taking that role as the city and being more planful might help to, it might get some attention <coughs> recognizing that if in absence of having a city approach, they're going to have an individual project approach as each of those projects come up. Um, so I think there's some motivation on the other part of whoever it is, recognizing that there's some significant opportunity for redevelopment, and so let's take a citywide view rather than individual block by block. Mm -hmm. so. um, thoughts around, so just a couple comments on next steps here. Um, so staff's looking for a recommendation um, or a vote from EDA tonight, which would be to recommend to council that they approve and then there are meetings between now and um, the city council meeting in two weeks with the planning commission and parks, trails and lakes commission where um, we will be um, doing a similar presentation, gathering their feedback um, and making a similar ask. Um, and the goal is that we would have um, kind of um, a vote of recommendation going into that city council meeting. So just make sure that we've kind of included all different um, um, voices from each of our different boards and commissions, um, and I think that's valuable feedback that council will be looking for. So we've had some touch points along the way, so this is kind of the capstone of each of those conversations. Yeah, I just want to thank city staff for all the hours you guys put into this, um, being the liaison with the consultant. I mean, I think we've got a robust plan that gives us a very clear blueprint for private development or even, you know, as a city that has had a lot of public input. Um, a lot of touch points and opportunities for the for the citizens to have a voice, um, which I think, you know, there's having been a part of the constant changing of the drafts, you know, our consultant took it to heart to implement that. So, yeah, it's good output. Excellent. Anybody, um, any further comments or anybody um, ready to make a motion? <coughs> I make a motion that we approve the, the plan and rec make a recommendation to council to approve. Excellent. There's a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. A motion and a second. Any further discussion? Just echo all of the comments and thanks to both staff um, and all of our boards and commission members that have spent a lot of time in a lot of meetings as well as the public in kind of getting us to this point. So i um, happy to support it this evening. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signal by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And motion is approved. All right, well that's a great transition then into Dan 2022 work plan update. Uh, President, members of the EDA, actually the next two items sort of go, they kind of dovetail um, into each other. Um, I, I felt it was probably a good idea at this point since you've been really heavily focused on the downtown plan is to take a brief moment to sort of just recap where we are in the overall, down, our overall work plan for the EDA, uh, give a six month update on the 2022 EDA work plan and then 
um, just sort of look at look ahead and do next six month look ahead as, as what's coming kind of down the pipeline uh, based on where we currently uh, sit. Uh, if you recall back in January of this past year, um, the EDA established a six month work plan um, rather than a two year update. Um, there's two reasons for that. Uh, first reason was that we were working on the downtown plan and knew that was gonna be approved and take a lot of the effort for the first half of the year uh, on the downtown plan. But then also, we're also at that point actively looking for a community development director and wanted to make sure that the new hire for the community development director had input on you know, what the EDA was gonna be doing um, into the future. So we set up a six month work plan and focused uh, primarily on just three items. First was the complete the downtown planning process, uh, begin work on the policy review of the uh, tax abatement, business subsidy, TIF programs, and update those pro, uh, policies as needed. And then also to continue this efforts in the Minnesota Technology Corridor um, by actively marketing the Headwaters 123 as part of that corridor update. Uh, I, I think we're uh, fairly well aware of the work that we've done on the downtown plan that has been the primary driver as to what we've been doing here for the past uh, six months. Um, we have done a little bit of work. I started the work on the down, uh, the, the, excuse me, the policy review for the business subsidy abatement and TIF programs. Uh, if you recall, I believe it was back in February or March, there was sort of the introduction to business subsidy programs that was presented. Um, that is as, as far as we've gotten there. Um, I would like to re kind of reboot that moving forward here to get um, those policies updated in the second half of 22. Um, with the goal of starting in 23 with updated um, policies and new um, uh, programs in place. So those really will dovetail nicely with the new downtown plan as that starts to bring development in. The incentive programs will also be ready to go at that point where if a developer comes in and asks, what's your TIF policy? Here's a policy for that. What's the incentive policy? Here's a policy for that. So then they can go back and start looking at, does my project meet these criteria that are there? Um, it's again, it's a great starting point for when a developer comes in, if you can hand them something that says, here's our, how the pathway, um, or how we utilize incentives or business subsidies within the city. Um, on the Headwaters 123, um, there has been quite a bit of work that has been done on this. It has not really been communicated out again since we've been primarily focused on the downtown plan. Um, I did present um, at the spring, um, back in May, at the Minnesota Real Estate Journal's I think it was Land Development Summit. I did a focus on the Minnesota Technology Corridor there and really highlighted the Minnesota, or excuse me, the Headwaters parcel. Um, we've also been working with um, Dan Peterson on looking at the listing to make sure is technology still the right sector uh, for that parcel. Um, as we all know, industrial land has been a pretty hot market segment in the past probably six to 12 months. Um, and then asking him to make sure, you know, because obviously when we signed up with Dan Peterson, it was not tech exclusively. It was, you know, looking at that, trying to create jobs, creating a job center for the city of Forest Lake. So looking at making sure that, you know, while we're still in the tech market, but are we also at this point, you know, is he marketing that in the industrial segment as well? Um, and based on that meeting, he is saying that he is looking at sort of any and all uses uh, for that particular parcel. So. While we're still primarily in the tech sector, uh, he's also looking at industrial uses for that parcel as well. Um, I will also reach out to Dan and have him come back in and, and have him present the market update to the EDA directly, because um, he obviously knows more details about the actual market since that's his level of expertise. Um, but I'll have him come in in the <coughs> second half of, of 22 to um, present the market updates. Um, along with the technology corridor, um, if you recall back in last November, we had Excipio come in and present on a study um, option for uh, doing a basically sort of a pretty in-depth study on the parcel to see where does fiber come in, you know, what is the return on investment from a, from a development standpoint, if it does develop as a data center, and then also how do we split down the parcel if it doesn't develop for the full 123 or 40 acres, what is needed for a data center, what's the most prime 40 acres, and we can make decisions on, you know, possibly looking at, do we wanna market it, you know, as a smaller chunk, just try to get a, a land that way. Um, if you recall, at the end of last year, my contact at Excipio retired, and I was introduced to a new contact there. Um, I'm still waiting to hear back. I did meet with him in the beginning of the year. I told him, wait until, you know, summer based on their book of business, they were pretty booked up. Um, we're supposed to reconnect here at some point over the summer months to get, you know, kind of a status update there. Um, but as I've been 
waiting for that call, I did also have a conversation with Dan just saying, you know, from a return on investment standpoint, you know, how good are these from a, you know, if we invest the money in a study, do we get a good return on those? And, you know, he said that they're not, in that, in the, they're not sort of the silver bullet. He said anybody who's gonna come in to do that type of study will probably do their own analysis. Not that they don't trust our numbers, but they wanna run their own modeling on the, on the, on the site. Um, additionally, you know, uh, Centerville completed one of these studies, I believe it was last year. So some of those incentives that are available to a data or to a text center that's coming in are more state driven. So those numbers would transfer over to a site here. So he was saying, he goes, you know, it's not gonna hurt the listing by having it done. He just was not 100% convinced you're gonna see a huge return on that investment. Um, so I'm still waiting to hear back from Excipio in terms of, you know, kind of, if they even have capacity within this year to do it, but also, evaluating if that return is going to be there because I think that's a key component in terms of if you want to authorize those studies is to make sure that return is going to be there. Um, so a little bit more to be determined on that one, um, but there has been work sort of continue those conversations to keep those relationships going on the headwaters parcel. What was the price tag on that XFPO study again? I believe it was right around 20000 yeah. And that is, there is a funding opportunity there where we could pr go for a pre-development grant application with Washington County, so we could potentially get that down to 10, because that'd be a 50-50 match. And then also, I could see if there's any other private dollars that would be available from within the corridor to help fund that study. Um, it was just sort of, you know, and asking, you know, the broker's kind of professional opinion on it kind of was, he did, and again, he wasn't saying it was bad. He was just kind of saying, he goes, if you have limited dollars to spend, he goes, it's not, you know, he was sort of 50-50 on the effect of it. We have, uh, well, yeah, I mean, go ahead. Well, just a question. I feel like the fellow that came in and did the presentation, one of the impressions I got was that he had relationships. And so, I mean, is there still some value there with the new person that maybe that guy or that person took with him when he retired? or? it seemed like another lead source in a sense. And that's exactly, that's a, that's a great point. It, that is exactly, when Jeff was here, you basically, I mean, you were getting the study, but you're also getting another marketing opportunity because he marketed those sites as he went out and sort of did the junket. You know, he was always speaking on different, you know, shows and all over the upper Midwest. And I don't know if our replacement is as active in the market as he, as Jeff was. And so when Jeff left, there was sort of that, did that, Rolodex go with him. I haven't confirmed that the new one has the same level of Rolodex or the same level of engagement within the market as as Jeff did. Uh, other, uh, I know we're we're not making final decisions, but I just hear priorities um, and think about broader needs um, within Forest Lake and broader kind of needs that this the EDA should be focused on. I, the headwaters parcel it continues to be important, but we've, we've spent a lot of time already on studies and data, and we have a lot that's already in the can. I'm, I'm just, of, of the things we could do, further investment there on something that's pretty specific, I just, if I feel like we're getting very, very specific on a parcel that may continue to be a long-term hold for us, and I'm, I'm, I'm just nervous on whether that's a good well, would, next I'd be step. curious in knowing what the shelf life for that study is. And then that's something too, I don't know how long those last. I mean, it, it, it could depend on if, if the Minnesota is sort of, if their investment, if the state's investment in technology stays rel relatively steady, I mean, I think they have a decent shelf life. Um, but I don't know if it's six months, a year, you know, two years. I don't, I don't know that off the top of my head. Um, we also, you know, we did ask, you know, Dan kind of point blank, you know, if, you know, what does he recommend in terms of if another study were to come down, you know, what would he see sort of some of that, you know, good return on investment would be. And, you know, one thing he had suggested was possibly doing, you know, I, I'm going to call it a ghost plot over there to see, you know, if you're going to break this down into smaller chunks, here's a couple of options, what it would look like. Kind of a, you know, remember when Commissioner Finneman was here, we did small area planning for a little bit, you know, kind of just put some Pen, you know, sketches on, on, on the parcel, maybe a little bit more level of detail on there um, than what, you know, Commissioner Finneman did. But one of the reasons for that is that when you bring that out to a, an end user, they can then look at that site and say, okay, 
if I take 40, here's what the rest of it would look at. So they can start to, so they're maybe not be as, you know, kind of apprehensive about just taking a portion of it. They can kind of see there's a plan for the remaining pieces that are there and they may buy two. Um, but again, that's sort of a double-edged sword because as we're seeing in the Twin Cities real estate market, larger contiguous tracts are becoming a rarer and rarer commodity. You know, a lot of those cities like Cottage Grove, which had a number of them, they're now full. They have no more developable large tracts of land, which is gonna put that need somewhere else. And, you know, our piece of that property is getting market traction. I mean, we're getting, you know, we're still getting paying with inquiries on it. So, you know, it's one of those things where is it worth additional study or can we just hold it and see what comes through? And Dan, my, perspe pers per uh, my perspective has been that more of the inquiries that you've gotten have been on larger, pro we've seen more interest in larger projects than smaller projects, right? Is that? that yeah, that's a fair assumption. I mean, there's been, there's been a lot, there's been some, you know, realtor based questions that always come in for smaller five, 10 mm -hmm. pre-existing sites. Mm -hmm. Um, but where we've been competitive in the probably the past three years are on those larger sites that are they're looking for 80 acres, 100 acres. Um, and when those come in, we continuously sort of, we stay in the game longer than we used to on those, on those inquiries that come in. This also has awareness with DEED. Right now, DEED is very aware of our site. So when they go out and they're getting inquiries that come in, our name is mentioned there. Um, and I do know um, a, a few national firms that you know, develop land nationally um, <coughs> have, you know, been impressed with what we've done so far to the site. You know, I can't name any names, but they've been saying, you know, they know that we're here to, you know, that we're a serious contender for development. So a lot of that groundwork that we've done, I, I think we've planted a very good field in terms of what can come out of that site. Go ahead. I, I'm just curious, um, the listing agent for the, the property, what is his marketing strategy? Who is he marketing to or is he referring it out the city so he actually is the main point so he actually is very well connected within the technology data center sphere um, that's sort of his that's where he focuses his energies um, but he does we we don't just get him we do get he's got other partners they do talk you know at CBRE they do have sort of a, a, a meetings I don't know if they're weekly but they talk about listings so if any project is coming in we're not just exclusively in technology they I mean that Broker sets a pretty small group, and they do market those internally around. So while we're focused on his expertise as technology, it's not being done at the expense of the industrial segment or the warehousing segment. We all we're in all of those markets as well at this point. Thank you. When do you want further? Like when? Where does this fit as far as next consideration, or um, specifically to Excipio? It sounds like. Sounds like Dan will come in to kind of give us an overview of the 123 site. Um, I've kind of drug us down this Excipio rabbit hole in this conversation, but are you kind of where does that fit? Like uh, us making a decision on next steps for that? I think what I want to do is have one more conversation with my contact there, just to kind of get a feel for his involvement in the industry to see if there's some value add there, and then also just you know touch base with them in terms of you know, do they have capacity, you know, because if this is something we have capacity for 22, you know, the market com could completely change by 23 and we could be looking at a different, you know, you know, because it seems like three or four years ago, tech was the darling of the industry and now it's industrial and now it's going to be warehousing. So it's sort of, you're kind of on some level, I don't, I don't want to say chasing the flavor of the month, but you want to make sure that when that does change that you're ready to, to pivot with it. And, you know, I'll reach out to my contact at Excipio and kind of, and see where that lands. And I guess I would just put that pot potential inv investment against some of the, we've got some studies that are identified as part of the downtown plan and maybe that it, it, we decide it takes a higher priority. Um, so. Okay. And, and to be fair, when I look at when RFIs come in for the parcel, when I've had to go through that process of presenting what we have, I don't see at this point a lot of really glaring misses or anything that we're totally missing in terms of that parcel. Um, if you're looking at extremely large scale development to come into that particular site, you know, an AUAR, you know, might be advantageous, but that sort of takes a look at, you can get a very large user in there and that can ex expedite the environmental review side of a, of a project. So that will keep you in the game a little bit longer because time for approvals is, right. you know, critical for those projects. 
that's probably the one miss that I see is in having that some of that maybe some of that pre-environmental work done or an AUAR done for that area. But that sort of gets outside of just that one parcel, creates a little bit larger study area. Yeah, that interceptor line that runs across there, is that being an issue, I mean, with uh, marketing that property, or it hasn't so far? It hasn't so far, but it can very well be one. Because I mean, it's, it's pretty a much a, it's, it's, a, a, it's straight. It's 36 inch, uh, 36 but inch interceptor. But I mean, it pretty much divides the property is what I'm getting yeah, at. Yeah, it does. It does, and we've had can some we, discussions with the couple of the interested developers about that and whether it could be moved or whether it could be built over or whether it can just be a parking lot over it. So in the long run, probably, I w if I had to guess, sooner or later we'll have to have it moved at, at our cost. Just my guess, really. We've already t had talks with the Met Council regarding that and how that would work. And probably a $2 but million dollar price tag. But maybe if a it was an industrial complex, it could, it could, they could adjust to it rather than yeah, I mean, what what the Met Council pretty strongly said is they don't want concrete over the top of that pipe. And if there is concrete over that pipe, then they'll have to move it. So yeah. yeah. That answers my question anyways, but. Is there, uh, are we getting, so this, I assume we're mainly talking developers for commercial, but are we getting, are you getting inquiries on residential for that at all? No, on that problem. Not for that parcel. Okay. No, it's, it's more the industrial and okay. technology sectors at this point. And so no other, like, you know, uh, I forget his name, the gentleman, Jamie. It's Jensen. Uh, Jensen, yeah. yeah. So he, he not, you've not heard from him or any other, you know, like that in the last since he was. No, we've, I mean, we've had a, a number of inquiries on housing developments and different parcels. It's just not that large parcel. There's also just lots of housing in other parts of the, you know, we've kind of seen the headwaters area around it. And yeah. Um, I have kind of taken us maybe a little off track of your planned discussion, Dan, of just overall kind of work plan update. Um, no, and this, the last, I mean, this is the last piece on there was the downtown plan. You know, now that we have the, the motion to recommend approval, um, you know, would be, spend time in that, the back half of, of 22, really starting to dive into sort of the execution side of it. Because as we mentioned in the past, you kind of go through the planning phase and you don't want to put that plan on the shelf and just have it sit there. You want to actually start accomplishing the goals that are in that plan. So, you know, spending time between now and the end of the year really starting to get that execution plan more identified and start looking at, you know, having some of those conversations on funding strategies, et cetera. So that's a little bit of a look ahead, you know, in terms of where we've been and also a little bit as to, you know, potentially where we're going to go here for the back half of 22. Um, I, I, I don't want to speak for Abby, but I would say probably recommend in the beginning of 23 is restarting and I'll get it back on the two-year uh, work plan cycle and just sort of use 22 as a, you know, shore up some of the planning activities that we've done with the downtown plan and the, you know, policy work and then, you know, hit it in 23. Um, but again, not, that all being said, the other items that are included on that previous work plan, um, there is still work that's being done on those. I mean, like in terms of workforce development, um, working to get a meeting set with Washington County's workforce coordinator to have an update there, still active with the career launch program. So those other items aren't just sitting there, not having anything done to them. They're just, there's still some work happening in the back, the back, you know, kind of behind the scenes on those as well. Um, but primary EDA focus will be you know, like I said, Headwaters 123, you know, getting the downtown, you know, plan, you know, teed up for execution, and then also the business incentive policy for the back half of 22. Do you think, um, do you want, is it worth some, uh, like another level of discussion related to some of the more specific items to come out of the downtown plan? Do you want some feedback on that now, or would we, do we want to wait until that thing is finally a all the way through council approval. I, I mean, my recommendation is wait till all the way through council approval. I mean, just, you know, I don't anticipate any major hiccups between now and then, but I'm sort of at the point where once everything's done and it's approved and adopted, the planning window is closed and we can start really focusing on, uh, on the adoption or the execution side of it. I think um, to that point, but also informative of things that we might want to consider for the 2023 budget, um, I think there's a couple of planning activities that we'll want to jump to the top of the list. Um, 
streetscapes, uh, planning with streetscapes and planning for the study around the boat launch are two that come to mind, but we can go further on that at another time. It seem like portions that are going to be city-led that because of some partnership need and involvement of other jurisdictions that we'll need to, if we want those to move, we'll have enough to drive that down the field sooner rather than later. And I think if everybody's okay, maybe that use that as a segue sort of into the drivers uh, for 2023 budget. Um, any, actually, before we do that, any other work plan kind of feedback items? I'm just looking at page 90. I'm looking at page 95 where staff attended the East Metro Development Summit in August. And I'm assuming you're talking about 21, right? Yeah, the update that was in the, the downtown, in the actual plan, that was last year's year end update. So we do. I've been going to those metro summits for, there's, there wasn't one specifically for East Metro. Um, each one of these conferences does attract a different group of, of brokers. So even though the presentation materials stay relatively the same, the audience does change. All right, good segue to budget driver discussion. Uh, President was at the EDA, um, just kind of want to have a high level discussion on the operating budget for the EDA. Um, as we mentioned, you know, sort of the, the capital improvement budget or the CIP plan for the downtown plan will kind of be a, a separate, you know, item, but this is more on the, you know, the operating budget, sort of the day-to-day the -day work that the EDA does, you know, for next year. Um, we did, you know, last year have one of these conversations again in, in July. Are there any initiatives that, you know, the EDA is looking at that's not funded, that's currently not being looked at, that we want to explore, um, just so we can start, you know, putting some numbers together for the 23's budget. Um, just to, uh, to recall some of the drivers that we looked at for 22 that I think transfer over to 23. Um, we did a chamber br &E agreement, you know, at the end of, actually the beginning of, end of 21 for 22. Um, and during the renewal portion of that, there was some conversation of possibly expanding services with the chamber. Um, and as such, that possibly will include, you know, increasing the amount of money that that, that contract is, is, you know, that we spend on that contract. Um, just a reminder that what we spend on 2022 was $5,000 for the services rendered. Um, I know there was, you know, quite a bit of discussion about that. Do we want to expand that? Do we want to, you know, increase what we're expecting? And also then at that point, increase the funding level for that. So that was one of the drivers, you know, that I identified um, from down from, from 22 that transfers over to 23. Um, additionally, the downtown incentive, if you recall, we did increase the level of funding for the downtown incentive for 22 to 30,000. Uh, two reasons was that we, A, we were looking at expanding the overall, you know, businesses that would qualify based on the geographic area from just downtown to basically almost all of Forest Lake, and then also adding in that tiered structure as well. Um, so far to date, we've had one formal application approved. Um, I've had two other inquiries recently, and I believe another one just came in, you know, not too terribly long ago. So we're actually looking at three other applications that are coming in, you know, <coughs> and it should be noted that those applications, we have not really done any formal like marketing outreach or formal push, you know, on that. That's been sort of organically driven to come back in. Um, in the event that in 22 we don't spend the full thirty thousand dollars, those excess funds would stay within the EDA's fund balance, and then would be used to grow sort of that incentive, the bucket that we could use for larger projects for, or for incentives in the future. So that was sort of, you know, if there's a demand in one year for that, those dollars. We'd expend them, but if for a year we don't spend the full thirty thousand, the remaining ten, fifteen, twenty would stay there, grow the fund balance. So if we do have a bigger project that comes in, we would be able to potentially have those that cash on hand for an incentive at that point. Um, so we recall we spent thirty thousand that was budgeted there. Just again looking at the conversation, you want to keep that funding level there. Any desire to increase that? You know, where does EDA sort of sit there? And then just a couple of other possible initiative or drivers. Um, support for workforce recruitment and retention strategies. As I've mentioned before, this is probably one of the biggest issues that most communities are facing, most businesses are facing right now is attracting and retaining talent. Um, it's also, when I present at the development summits and have talked to people in the industry, it's also the one that's probably the toughest in the public sector to really get our arms around. Um, 
which is why I'm reaching out to Washington County's workforce who we recently reconnected and was sort of like, hey, is there any way, what other communities doing? What can we do to assist there? I don't necessarily know that there's a funding need for that um, in terms of like, you know, what's gonna be required from a funding standpoint, uh, but more probably of a support standpoint. How do we support those, you know, recruitment and retention efforts? Because uh, if you can, you know, it's great that you can build the, the, the employment base here, but if you don't have the workers to fill those jobs, you know, that's, that can be a challenge. Um, additionally, looked at labor market assessment. Tim, um, before you the, move on, before oh. you move on from that, um, is there something that we can do from a, one of the questions that always comes in is what is our available workforce? And we, we have some, I think some numbers that kind of show the, for the like what are the, whether we are an importer or an exporter of jobs, right? Um, is there more work that could be done there that would paint the picture of available workforce? Uh, and is potentially that part of what Washington County might be considering? And I know when Chris Ang was here last, he was talking about potentially doing like a North Washington County, Mid Washington County, South Washington County um, study of ex exactly that question. Is that, that's just something that I, I think is a common ask and we struggle sometimes to have that data at the grand, you know, A, amounts, but then also skill sets and some of the, you know, income requirements and some of those things that um, a robust study might provide. Is that part of what we might be in an assistance role and or maybe leaning on a Washington County? Yeah, to that point, I mean, I, I have spoken with Chris. The county is looking at doing that in early 23. I was looking at doing a labor shed study, um, similar to the, the Chisago County one that was presented here, kind of in the same vein. Um, they're looking at breaking it down North Washington County, kind of mid Washington County, then Southern Washington County, because I think all of them we look at them are gonna have different labor sheds and different recruitment. Like we're gonna be able to get Northern and kind of more central, kind of pull some of Chisago probably, you know, through here, that's not gonna be accessible down in Southern Washington County. At this point, they're looking at trying to fund that themselves and not have an ask there. But I think as a fallback that if they don't, or they're not able to fund that, possibly, you know, there's been kind of preliminary conversations with Chris about is that something that we could potentially do for a pre-development grant? You know, because I know it's not specific to a property, but it does give us that data set where somebody comes in and says, what's your labor shed look like? We can show what Forest Lake's labor shed look like especially now that we have Chisago counties to the north, we can really start to get a pretty good picture of what this whole area kind of brings, you know, from a labor perspective, because if you put an employment center here, yes, you're gonna pull from within the community, but you're also gonna pull from Chisago County. You're also gonna pull from Western Wisconsin. And part of Chisago's study does pull those areas in, and they probably reach a little further out into central Minnesota than our study would. So you start to get those that bigger picture of what Forest Lake can recruit, which is, you know, kind of the benefit of being right on the county line is that, you know, when you have that, you share a county line, you're gonna be able to, that study is applicable to us, but probably not so much so for somebody in Southern Washington County. So the studies are, they're looking at funding them at the county level with no participation required from the local municipalities. That's not a guarantee at this point, but it's something I think that we should continue to have on the radar screen, because if for some reason funding doesn't materialize at the county, it may be looking, worth looking at potentially just going out and doing one for Forest Lake just because there is quite a bit of value there from an employer standpoint to have that labor shed study done. Yeah, I think it's a topic that's just challenging for us. We're just a small piece in this large labor market and it's tough for individual cities to have kind of the resources to study, manage, all of the above. So. I, I've asked other other people, you know, who work in the, in the public sector, I said, if you figure out the silver bullet for this, let me know, <laughs> because we are all sort of looking at each other and saying, you know, it's kind of that blending line of like, where does the public sector interface with the private sector and what can you do? Because you're not really, you can't force people into certain industries. So it's sort of, Correct. It's, a, it's, a, it's a tough nut to crack, but. Well, and then and it begs also the question on who's going to be the user of it because our current our current employers already know right they they know what that what their recruitment you know shed looks like and where they're successful and where they struggle um, and so you're really looking at providing that to new employers and 
larger organizations are going to do their own study to your previous point and so it's kind of this question on who's the user of it and are we the best provider of that data so yeah. well if we're marketing that land to light industrial I mean, would it be of value Correct. to attract those employers and i think that the commissioner erickson's point that is uh you know having a current labor shed study if you're going to the table with somebody coming in from a warehousing or a light industrial standpoint and saying the overall market from you know Chisago County and Northern Washington County can support X number of warehousing jobs that that labor force is here based on you know these Cush these Cushman and Wakefield studies I think there is value there because you know they can see then you know while they may do their own analysis that at least says yes this one does pass that initial test in terms of you know as a possible site for them to locate at And then the last thing I have on in terms of other possible initiatives was there had been some conversation about, you know, a resource packet for local small businesses, you know, it's sort of kind of connecting the dots for some of those, you know, local businesses to kind of get them some assistance there. So there was some conversation about, you know, the creation of a resource packet, you know, for those local businesses as well. Um, so that's a little bit of what I had for 23, you know, operating budget drivers um, opening up at this point for any, you know, feedback on that, did it, anything that was missed, anything that, you know, needs to be added to that, that you want to take a look at before we bring back sort of that first draft budget in the next couple of months, in the next, you know, in the near future. Is there a follow-up study already approved for HKGI? And is that in here? HK? To the, oh. the consultant on the downtown plan? Didn't we do like a supplemental agreement for the southeast quadrant? For 22, this would be for 23, so this would be for next year's operating budget. Would there be any need to line item something f for that, or do we not anticipate any further? I, I think there's going to be, you know, there is some need for follow-up studies, you know, as a result of the plan. I think, I, yeah, and whether that service provider is HKGI or there's somebody else, but I think, you know, certainly the boat launch has, you know, there's some questions around further study with the boat launch and certainly around streetscapes and some of those individual projects certainly have a study phase um, that we should be considering for that 2023. And those projects have been budgeted to account for design engineering studies. So the boat launch boat parking is its own study, but let's say it's a streetscape beautification project that total dollar amount that you see has includes some of that study. I think mm -hmm. Leif is, is asking maybe about just that line item for planning services. The plan does call for needing some planning services continuously. I think that first year you probably would be pretty, first couple of years might be kind of limited on that just because we'll be initiating some of those projects at, in this next couple of years. But as we kind of start to vet out the plan and work through it, there might be a need to bring them back in to, for modifications or updates or those sorts of things. Okay, go ahead. Um, I would like to make sure we look at the chamber agreement and look at possibly increasing that. Other EDAs of other cities do major funding for their chambers. And um, when you talk about retaining labor, <laughs> I'd like to retain our chamber director. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'd like us to look at that. Along those lines, just planting some seeds, as we look at the increased funding, um, I think part of the question is also what is what does that go for or what does that go towards? And so um, I, I think there's two sides of that. One is the funding side and then what, the other is the scope of services and just what is that? And I, th I think there's a, I'm sure the chamber has a number of things that they would propose to be part of that. and. Um, should part of the conversation we should have. Other um, other things on the wish list for 2023 to start planting some seeds from a budget standpoint? I've just got a question of clarification. Is new tracks now totally funded by the city and not the EDA? Yes. Yes. Um, is this, I, uh, you know, these are kind of just long-term, not even long-term or short-term, but think minor things, but um, 
and it goes something, I don't know if we, it was part of the EDA originally, but I know the Lions were involved with it, but our banners are starting to fall apart and that. Mm -hmm. So if, if I think if we, if we can reach out to both Rotary and, and Lions and see if they're interested in doing something, if not, I think we need to budget that agree. for next year for sure, for sure. I would also kind of put in short-term streetscape items. Um, we do continue to have certain areas of streetscape that are less than ideal and some short-term <coughs> improvement would be helpful. I just happened to walk through the park yesterday and, and noticed that the median in the parking lot of the park is just a, a wheat bed of just, and there's areas like that that are just part of city median or city places that are probably less than ideal. Speaking of cityscape, this is another small item, but as long as you're writing down things, if you can, if, if we have like a small miscellaneous fund, um, a small step, inexpensive step we could take toward the downtown plan is could we put up some bike racks nearby the trail uh, where people could lock up their bike and walk into town and do that now rather than wait five years down the line as part of the plan? That's been discussed yeah. before in the past. What happened to it? Yeah, nothing. That's oh. the problem with it. <laughs> Yeah, but it's a great idea. I mean, that's something we've been wanting to do for quite some time. We just, for whatever reason, it gets lost in the yeah. process, so. My son and his girlfriend now have e-bikes, so they're on the trail all the time, but they can't leave their bike to go into a restaurant. They, they tried it, and they were petrified. They're parked by the window watching their bikes. Um, so it would be nice if we had something. That's a great point. As one who's cycled through town quite a bit, our cycling infrastructure once you get out, even on the trail, is a little bit lacking, so it's a, it's a great point. That also might be a good county. County may have some low-hanging fruit dollars for, especially if we're gonna do it right along the trail. Any la land acquisition on this part of this downtown project, is that something you would see would be funded through the EDA, or is that strictly city? Yeah, I look at that piece of property, the, the Rube's Tire, the, the Stark, block, the city already owns a little small portion of that where the water treatment plant is. And I, you know, looking at this plan, the aerial view of the downtown, that, that just, that block just looks prime to be able to maybe pick up. I know that there's some discussions with the, on the Hool site about selling some city owned land there. Can some funds be transferred in somewhere to, to at, buy other properties from those funds that, that proceeds that we get? I, I don't know if that's something that's yeah, possible. Yeah, if not. you wanted to buy, a, in that particular case, we would have to figure out how that was going to be financed, whether it was, if it's through EDA, which <coughs> has used its bonding authority in the past, so it's a possibility, again, all of it is depending on how much it is and where the debt service gets paid out of, so. And if it's mostly, I don't see us having another funding source on, on that type of thing besides bonding or TIF or, again, the sales tax or public-private partnerships, but Again, it's it's a good idea that we should be looking, that's the stuff we should be looking at. And that, the reason I bring it up right now, is just based, if we're looking for putting money aside, I don't know if there's a small item and just to look, uh, and I hate to use another study, but to have some funding to allow to look into doing that and, and if that's an EDA driven project or, or not. And the other piece was, if part of the plan is that vacant spot there just, uh, you know, for the, where they talked about the bikes coming off the trail and I don't forget that what it's called in here, but you know, just, things to and no, I mean, I think that's the first steps of, of the downtown plan is to identify some of those. And it's not that they're huge or small, but those kind of things we may be able to pick up quicker acquisition than theories. others. And, and maybe it's the staff having a conversation. I, I know it gets really awkward when publicly we're talking about other people's lands without <laughs> having a conversation yes. with them. But I, I think that, you know, knowing the starts, they're, they're, I don't think they really have an exit strategy there as far as the business. And they're, they're you know, uh, Mr. Starks uh, probably ready to retire. So maybe it's just a conversation. He has those one or two homes just to the west of that, that commercial piece. And I think that would just be as far as a, a prime spot for bark or uh, boat trailer parking with just the, having to cross 61 just seems like a, yeah. a really, yeah. at least something to explore pretty strong. Mm -hmm. And at least to have the conversation initially to see what their timeline might look like and if it's even if there's even mutual interest because if yep. there's not mutual interest there's it's a much different answer so I, I know when we did the the when they we sold this the land city hall land 
they didn't have any interest in doing anything then. And that's why it's still, you know, they, they wanted, I think Gon would, would have taken that. They would have been, but maybe it just wasn't price, or, but I don't think he was quite ready to, to, be, to hang up the, the entire business yet. So. It was also seven, eight, yeah, it's been a while. nine, ten years ago. Yeah, a while ago. Where would the boys have coffee? Right, yeah. There was like 18 of them in there today. So. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. Facetious, but that's, yeah, not, well, I think it's a good idea. I mean, I'm not sure exactly where Dick is coming from because he's 80. You know, he's, I'd be gone in a heartbeat <laughs> if, you know, if I had the opportunity, but I think we should explore it. I really do. Any other questions or thoughts related to planning? So, Dan, just want to make sure I understand timing for next steps. So this kind of comes back in an August meeting um, specifically around kind of operating budget and then because um, just refresh of process, operating budget is impacted and funded through the general fund. We need to pass a preliminary levy for that budget in September. Um, numbers can go down after September for general fund, but they can't go up. Um, and then we would have through the end of the year to do things that are capital improvement um, or kind of CIP capital projects that would not have a need for a 2023 general fund fund. We can do that between now and the end of the year and still have it be included as part of a 2023 budget. But anything that's going to require cash out the door for 2023 really needs to be on a pretty solid punch list or at least a wish list for September. Again, we can always skinny it back. We just can't make it bigger after September. So. Yeah, anything that requires bonding or capital improvement or even a capital purchase since the, um, the levy has to be set, which also includes the general fund, it does include the general fund, but it's also the capital fund, the street fund, the EDA fund, all of it have, will be set in September. So we have to be aware of uh, what kind of expenditures we may be looking at in 23. One last thing then, uh, thinking about <laughs> deadlines and making sure you do everything in there. When you're looking at buying uh, in the future, somebody who's ready for, to retire, should we have in the funding um, a certain dollar amount for um, proposing a first right of refusal to that property owner, giving him $5,000, make sure that when you're ready to sell, you know, you get an appraisal and the city is paying you for that first right to buy that property. And you want to get in there before gone or somebody else got in there, right? But yeah, that was my point on just try, trying to put something in there so we have some ability to, and, and we typically we would, it seems like if it's gonna be EDA funded, we, you know, we, we we're pretty good about not spending our complete budget. So there, there could be something there, but that might be something we can about. Yeah, we'll look at those properties that we were mentioned tonight and see what approach we need to take to try to get in the door there. All right. Anything further for 2023? All right. Let's um, move the conversation on to city updates. Abby, Dan, Patrick, anything for city updates mm -hmm. that we haven't already talked about? It's just kind of been a potpourri of a meeting. All right. Washington County updates. Don't have anything. For I spoke Chris. with Chris this morning. He has no updates uh, for the next meeting. Okay. And Leif, I believe you have a chamber update. Yeah. So Nanette shared some notes here with me today. Um, she was sorry she couldn't be here, but with the golf deadline right around the corner, she's uh, all yes. hands on deck for that. So her update: uh, we welcomed several new businesses with ribbon cuttings and celebrated other momentous events with multiple Forest Lake Chamber members. There's been quite a few other chamber chamber members getting involved. Um, 10 new biz new members to the chamber over the last several months. That's fabulous. What's that? That's fabulous. Yeah. Um, is preparing for the Business Education Day event. We will welcome the 2022-2023 new educators to the area. And looking forward to the launch of the What's Next CEO program with our partnership with the Chamber Coalition and Washington County CDA. Mm -hmm. yeah. And last but not least, wrapping up final registrations and preparations for the 35th annual Chamber Golf event one of the Chamber's premier events of the year, which takes place two weeks from today. Perfect. Thank you. And anything else to come before us this evening? We, you know, we briefly spoke last week time about maybe not having a meeting on that for the... 
Oh, the, 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 the I am golf so glad you mentioned that. Tournament just so we could participate or. A hundred percent. But if there's a lot of stuff on the agenda, then maybe we, we should still have a meeting. I guess I don't know. Let's what. talk. Maybe the 25th. You know, basically, as of this point, I don't see anything that can't be held until August because, I mean, A, that allows the chance for the downtown plan to be finalized and approved. So we're dealing with a set of knowns at that point. So, you know, looking ahead, I actually didn't have anything really marked for the 25th, but we can all take care of that the first meeting in August and doesn't affect any timelines. I would, I would agree. That's, let's just make that executive decision now that we would have our next meeting on Monday, it'd be Monday, August 8th. Yes. Thank you for, thank you for bringing that up. All right, with that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. 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 There's a motion and a second. All those in favor signal by saying aye. 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 Oppose, and we're adjourned. Thank you everybody. Have a great evening.